That is. <laughs> that is. <laughs> oh dear. And welcome to the Mediocre Photography Show. My name is Ben. And my name's Jack. And uh, we've got a pretty jam-packed episode for you today, haven't we? We have. Talking about a lot of things. Um, so the ep- title of today's episode is Getting to Know Each Other's Library. Sounds right. a bit weird when I say it like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we need to talk about some other things first of all. Mm. And uh, it's on the agenda. Yeah, I think the first thing to talk about is uh, your brainchild, isn't it? My brainchild? Which is well, the it's photo really, conversations. It's not really my brainchild. It's, it was someone else's. Then I just like renamed we've decided that it might be a, a nice idea to do um it was your brain charge jack yeah so it's media photo conversations it's like an usual photo conversations sort of deal you have like a theme and then you and a friend both take a picture upon that theme yeah and uh And then you sort of, uh, well, we hopefully will be discussing each other's work and maybe you never know. There might be a few different sizz in work. Um, we might want to try something different. So, but that will, um, all be going up on the Instagram and, uh, hopefully people will join in. Uh, That would be sort of the main goal. It's, It's, well, it's for us because I'm so uncreative at the minute, it's starting to hurt me. But <laughs> it, it would just... It's a way to force yourself into it. Yeah, yeah. I sort of needed something to get me outside taking photos. So, um, yeah, mediocre photo conversations. Um, they'll obviously go up on the Instagram. And, uh, yeah. P- yeah, P- and, uh, you know, if you want a chance to be featured as well, then use the hashtag. Uh, um, a mediocre conversation i'll put that at the bottom yeah a mediocre conversation because it's like a, a normal conversation, conversation but it's mediocre exactly um and yeah like i say uh get get creative mm. do things i think well what's the first word is um uh, the first word is constant constant yes which is really it was genuinely it was so weird that i like I came up with the idea in my head and then I random word generated the word and then I was there like, okay, this is definitely an idea and then messaged you being like, this is the idea. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really good. Um, it's a good so, starting word, I think. Yeah, it's definitely a good starting word. Um, but what, so, but, yeah, but, I, but, but I, here we go. Why Why are we doing, why am I doing this? What? Why did I want to force myself to go outside, Ben? Because we're because stuck in isolation. We are stuck in isolation. <laughs> this is the quarantine edition. Me more so than you. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm apparently important. <laughs> so I get to work. <laughs> First time for everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Work never calls me important. Anyway. No. Mine did neither. <laughs> yeah. Um, we are at home. Mm. Obviously, Obviously yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't my garden. Um, we are, I think, both not feeling particularly creative at the moment, is fair to say. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to keep it up. And I've been trying to, uh, you know, work through it a little bit. But the problem is that I'm obviously back home now. And I photographed my immediate area to death. Like there's only so much I can photograph. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I think we're all feeling the, uh, yeah, feeling it a little bit. How are you getting on with it? Yeah. I, um, I still obviously haven't put those film rolls in from like however long ago, like three months ago, maybe. Um, and obviously. Just put them in the post to me. I'll do them for you. I could do actually. I don't know how long this is going to last, but I was going to be like, oh, it'll only be a month, so I'll just put them in then. <laughs> how one. wrong well I done. was. How wrong how I wrong was. Um, but no, so I have shot another roll of film. And yeah, as as you said, I think my immediate area is now done to death. Mm. So something, something different, maybe. Um, 
with this whole photo conversations, it, it's just a bit, a bit of fun, really. Yeah, I think uh, you'll be very surprised by my do you know, photo. Do you know what? Yeah, uh, I think it. I'm not giving anything away. No, but I think you'll be very surprised with so, what I've chosen. So I'm guessing it's like different to what you normally take pictures of. Completely obviously, completely different to what yeah. I take not pictures of. See, yeah. that's what I. Uh, oh, and this this is the other thing that I think we'll find challenging as well is actually not going out and doing what we would. Normally, normally do, do yeah it. which is is also, also we are being good boys and you know staying indoors staying to quarantine and staying indoors and yeah like i did mine in my garden for example that's the only clue i'm giving away the only the, yeah i think my idea will take me outside into my garden but yeah, yeah it sort of gets us doing something different than we usually used to yeah yeah because i exactly. apparently can't take uh visits to the graveyards now so apparently that's off the list but um when's the uh deadline uh it's every monday for the first episode so the, every monday so i don't know when this will come out but we're recording this on a tuesday so it, the word came out yesterday and we'll maybe try yeah we'll try we'll get it out. <laughs> yeah <laughs> before that and um but no it'll be every monday and we'll mm. discuss it on the podcast directly afterwards the after yeah. the monday the, so we'll discuss in. our photos next week yeah did you just say hand in yeah can you can you <laughs> can you tell i'm missing uni <laughs> but i do see people doing work like there is mm. a lot of people that are still shooting which is good i guess i wouldn't mind having the ideas that they have but um yeah it's difficult um i think the it's important for us, without sounding too artsy fartsy, it's important for us as photographers to um, first of all stay safe, but second of all realise that the world isn't ever going to be the same after this. No. I think that this is going to be a huge world de world defining event. And the sanctions that have been put in place haven't been put in place since the Second World War. Mm. Um, and that is both incredibly interesting, but incredibly terrifying. And us as effectively documentarians need to photograph everything from the everyday all the way up to the world view of this and see how that's going to affect it or not affect it. Um, but you know, don't spread it. Yeah. <laughs> don't be awful. How many times have you washed your hands today, Jack? Uh, I washed it before I had lunch. I washed it as soon as I woke it up. So maybe like three or four. Three or four. Into the toilet it's twice. It's great. He's on it. He's on it. See. Yeah. I. Th that was. That's. Be like Jack. Be like. Wash your hands. Wash your hands after before after before eating a sandwich. And after. Oh, and after. It might be sticky. You can do. Yeah. But and sharing and <laughs> just maybe not holding the sandwich <laughs> might get wet. Yeah, my uh, gammon and cheese sandwich. So yeah, we are talking today about our favourite photo books. Mm. Um, so we didn't really go into this with too much of a gender either, did we? We just sort of said, let's do our. Well, I've got five. I've got five you've got four mm. of our sort of favorite books that we've ever had yeah and then we've also both got a bit of a wild card at the end <laughs> one i don't know like that we're embarrassed <laughs> well, to have i'm not embarrassed or... to have just like why do we have it it's not anything to do with well that's my book that's my okay sort of that's fine wild card. that's fine but um, um no. but yeah so it should be interesting um it's more of a get to know us episode yeah, yeah, I think so. And so I kind of, I've, with my selection, and oh, and by the way, we should say as well that we haven't seen each other's work. No. Like, we don't know what we've chosen here. No, but we have a feeling that we know that we've got a I couple mean, of the same. <laughs> after knowing each other for four years and knowing each other for one, I think yeah. we probably have a good idea of each other's tastes. Um, but... Yeah, so we said that I would start with my first Go one. For it. And with my selection, I've kind of I've gone a little bit 
chronological with um, how I've chosen this. And I think each book kind of reflects a different part of my photography, if that makes sense. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, so the first one is one that I don't think you ever would have guessed in a million years. Right. That, oh, all the mic sounds, um, you would have got, but it's actually, uh, the humans of New York. Ah, now I know a little bit about this, but carry on. So the reason the uh, Honey was sort of the first thing on my list was I realized with following Humans in New York, I mean, I must have started following it back when it was like massive back in sort of 2014-ish, uh, which is coincidentally when I started first getting into photography properly. And I realized that the it had a huge amount of power over people's opinions. It was used as a catalyst to tell stories. And um, back in my relative naivete of sort of pre coming onto a degree photography then, I was like, I have so many stories to tell. I want to tell other people's stories. And so Humans of New York absolutely fascinated me. Um, I think it's it was like that catalyst and i remember sort of the very first projects that i did was quite similar to humans of new york where i was doing sort of almost photojournalism of people at train stations and i would photograph people on train stations and people on trains and like you know um ask them where they're going and what they're doing and stuff like that and then um in the series i had uh all of the people um, were sort of accompanied with quotations, which was obviously quite a direct link to very to uh, Brandon's book. Um, yeah, I think that he's an amazing journalist. I don't think he's an amazing photographer. I think that some of his photos do have worth, um, but yeah I, I i absolutely love the book i think that's one of the things that i would sort of criticize about that a it's sort of law of averages and there are some stories in there that really resonate with me and there are a couple of stories there that were like actually quite powerful and I realized that they were powerful because they were quite personal. And when you've got a book that's this thick, you're going to eventually hit on something that makes that that uh, that has an impact. Mm. And if you do that enough, that impact will be made. And what may resonate for me may not necessarily resonate for you and have the same emotional impact. Um and so I kind of feel like almost it's a bit of a needle in a haystack if you interview enough people, because he's been doing this for 10 years now. Yeah. But if you interview enough people, eventually you will strike gold. Yeah. So, yeah, I think to surmise the reason that Humans of New York was so such an important book for me was because it paved the way for showing me how powerful photography can be mm. and its kind of importance as well. Oh. Damn. Well, are, and, and um, I've got to follow that. Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> right. Um, do you, I don't know. Do, should, do, I think should we discuss it first, or because uh, you you said that you know humans of New York. What what well, what do you like about it? Do you like it? Yeah. This uh, is it. The same. I've seen the. It's like it's not humans of New York. It's something like it. It's um. The guy where he hangs, he takes a gazebo and like washing lines and like people just write their stories on it and he goes to different cities and he's had a, he's had right. a few art exhibitions where they've just had the, the stories on it. And that sort of thing where you could just like, as you said, sort of read someone else's story and be like, oh, actually that sort of, that, that means something to me. I feel the same way. 
some mm. randomer across the across the pond is is quite it's quite nice. But yeah, put it on. It's all right. So I oh, should we do a rating as well? For okay. The books? Yeah. Uh, so I give Humans of New right. York three and a half out of five stars. That's not bad. That's not bad. From what you're yes. saying, I think it it the photography wise is not the greatest, but it's bigger than that isn't it so i think i'll go yeah. from what you're explaining i think i'll go three three and a half stars out of five nice same, same rating. rating well it won't be a surprise to you ben but um i've always well i've had an interest i have my photography uh i document the past and i have an interest in documenting history and uh and one of these books that uh lit that fire would be Jack Latham's Sugar Paper Theories. Never would have guessed. Would have guessed. Yeah, um, this book is is pretty pretty impressive. Um, it's it's sort of like a mixed media sort of thing. There's like different papers and different clippings and newspaper and stuff like that, as an archival documentary book would have. Right. Um, it's quite a long winded story so i think definitely leave the book in the description because if people are interested but to summarize the the book is about it's set in iceland and uh it's about these uh disappearances that happened in iceland and uh and the police at the time don't know when it is I'll just have to, yeah, put the link in the description. And uh, they, the police sort of took these people in, I think seven, seven people in, and uh, they sort of accused them of murdering the people that disappeared. And, uh, and they sort of accused them and tortured them so much that the people that they brought in genuinely started to believe that they'd done it. And it's sort of, it's, it's just a sick story. And uh, the way Jack Latham does it is, is so impressive. He's done it alongside a, he's done it alongside, I'm not going to try say his name because it's Icelandic and it's very complicated, but um, it was alongside someone who worked there at the time. And so um, it's just a really interesting story and it's got all these clippings and it, it you know it started this journey that i'm on documenting the past and also who doesn't like a a, a murdering story you know it's a, it depends on who's being murdered that's a good point um <laughs> <laughs> but no it's it's a it's a really interesting story and it's a mix of portraits, landscapes, color, black and white, but it is it is just right up my alley. It's um that, is it printed on sugar paper? I have no idea. If it yeah, yeah. Some, some of it, yeah. Okay, that's fine. It's, well, not all of it, but some of it, yeah. But it's like a as I said sort of like a mixed paper, but it's got like all the information in it. Like it's got newspaper clippings, like it's just it's just impressive. It's interesting. Um it's an interesting sort of concept for a photo book, this very forensic, yeah. you know, almost discovery style. The you always kind of liken that to something like uh you know the ted bundy tapes yeah. or have you watched tiger king yet oh, i am on the last Joe episode Zotic. oh mate um you know you kind of you liken those kind of stories to stuff like that mm. and it's very interesting how photography is able as a medium to almost encompass every corner of storytelling in that way yeah. and i think that it is very unique to latham in that kind of sense mm. of nobody well, i can't think of another project that has documented that kind of thing in that way yeah, in yeah. that very robust documentarian style but using still image not moving image yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And again, I think it kind of shows the good that photography can do. Mm. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> did they go free to, or are they still imprisoned? It, it just, it sort of just ends. The, but it, it's got this bit at the end where it's sort of explaining what the hell's going on. But it it doesn't again i i just look at the pictures nowadays but the mm. story is pretty incredible and pretty f***ed up to be honest but um yeah definitely go check the story out because again i it it i'm not the smartest i'm not even the second smartest but you know this is a pretty impressive story Fair enough. So, go on then, Jack. Out of five, you would give it a five, obviously. Five, five out of five from Jack. Five out of five. Five out of five from Jack. Um, I've seen it. I've seen the special edition one. I'm going to give it a, uh, a steady four out of five. I've not sort of sat down and studied it, but uh, yeah, I'm sure that if I did, I would. Uh, you have to lend it to me. Not the special edition one because. Nah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, sure. <laughs> so the next one that I've got is another one that you actually probably wouldn't have guessed. And that is... Ah. This is... Uh, Harry Callahan's uh, Nature. Um, and it's a very interesting, it's a very interesting book. Uh, first of all, I'll tell you the story behind the book, uh, which is quite a funny one. The, an ex-partner and I used to work, or an ex-partner of mine used to volunteer at a charity shop. And so I always used to go and pick her up after work. And um, when I was waiting for her to finish, I'd just sort of scour the book section and I came across this one, which um, is actually a first edition Steidl Press. So it's worth Ooh. a lot of Big money. Bucks. <laughs> Big bucks. And I got it for, I think, two pounds because they weren't sure what it was worth. <laughs> you kept your mouth shut. <laughs> and I kept my mouth shut. And it was only after the transaction went through, I was like, ah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and it's absolutely fantastic condition. Like there's not a scratch on it. Um, it's really, really, really been kept nicely. And the interesting thing about Harry Callahan was, first of all, do you know much about him? I remember you saying about the charity shop story and you bringing the book into uni. But apart from so, that, bloke. so no, I don't know anything about Harry, Harry Callahan. Yeah, uh, he is a well, he was. He's 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 died now. Um, a street photographer, primarily, right. and a portrait photographer, sort of post-war forties and fifties in Chicago, and that's sort of how he. Did you know he had his bread and butter, and you know he's a huge, huge photographer. Like there are um, quotes in here from the likes of John Zakowski, right. the guy who did. Uh, he's curator of the Museum of Modern Art in New York, um, and a massive photographer. But he's not very well known in the UK. Anyway, um, and the reason that I found this project quite interesting was because this is his nature photography and he was not known for that at all and as i dug more into it i realized that you didn't have to have kind of one style of photography if that makes yeah. sense you can photograph whatever you want to and for me personally as i mentioned i kind of started off with portraiture 
and very quickly transitioned into sort of landscapes and from there you know i've stuck with landscape and documentary landscape photography as my main thing and i think that callahan's sort of work was quite prudent to that change was because it came into my life as you know as a blessing almost a two pound um, blessing and a two pound <laughs> blessing um and it sort of made me realize oh i can actually do different things i don't have to be pinned to this one kind of thing and i still take portraits occasionally They're not very good <laughs> um but they still get taken um, just because it's kind of something that I enjoy uh, sort of chatting to people. But he's, he was a very eclectic photographer and his practice was very famous. He was very famous for just going out and taking photos. He didn't have an agenda. He didn't have a motif other than I'm going to go out, see where the wind takes me and go from there. Um, what, what do you think about kind of the idea of, um, because you're, I was going to say something quite mean there. Go for it. I can take it. <laughs> you're quite. <laughs> I was going to say you're a bit of a one-trick pony. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. That's why. Yeah. 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 I'll take that. Do you, do you ever? I mean, uh, not in sort of published, but published work. Like just in day-to-day -day life, is there a style of photography that you do? Do you sort of go out and? try different things, I don't know, like whatever, log exposure photography, or when you are photographing for your own enjoyment, do you, do you still kind of stick with? Yeah, I, I only see the world in one way, and that's sort of without other people in it. You know, so I, like, when I went out to shoot that other role of film, I sort of didn't. I get the idea, and I, I would, I think that's, to be able to, be a an established street photographer and then just go to all of a sudden just switch to nature like that and then still have the same sort of impression then you know it's that's impressive and that that is talent whereas mm. <laughs> one trick pony <laughs> no i think it's um and i think you're right i think yeah, I, I I need to see the photos. I'll give it a Google after this if I see if I can find any images. But um, it seems if you you like it, so I'm going to give it a uh, an average three three point five. Nice. Same again. Yeah, because that'll be easy for me to edit in. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to give it a four because that's what I gave the other okay. one. <laughs> right. Next one. Go on. You're not going to believe it. It's another documentary history book. Is this is uh, from photographer Leo Delafontaine. Uh, and it's called, bear with me on this one as well, Articugal. Articugal? Oh, Articugal. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, this is again a, uh, a documentary like a, mm -hmm. a archival documentary project, which is based in, again, with the names, you'll have to dip, bear with me because most of this is in Russian. Um, cool. It's on, right, okay, so it's like north of Scandinavia, there was a an island or a bit mm -hmm. of Arctic Circle. Yeah? That was called... Yeah. Svalbard. Sval Schwalbard. Yeah. And um so pretty much it was a uh, a very important coal mine um to the sort of to Russia. It was a uh one of their coal mines out there and um and pretty much it, it it's sort of fallen off. It's not it got um, everything sort of got abandoned after. Oh, you can have to bear with me. Was it by any chance the Svalbard Act of nineteen twenty five? That was the one where they pretty much just like they like like shut it down. Well, not shut it down, but they sort of just. I think they wanted to make it some military sort of military base, or just to. 
go into what Jack was saying a little bit more, Svalbard was actually uh, quite a strategic area of importance for both the Norwegians and that the Russians, um, because it's quite a contested area in that Norwegians, Norway is very pro-NATO and they allow um, uh, a lot of war games to be held uh, in Svalbard, which is very close to the Russian border. So it's often been quite contested. Both countries want to lay claim for this. Um, Norway, it is Norwegian territory. It's recognised as Norwegian territory, but Russia doesn't kind of see that. And um, like I say, it's it's kind of a gateway in from Russia's northern fleet into the rest of Europe. So that's the reason that it's quite contested. You sort of see the sort of Soviet era, it's sort of all there still. And mm. pretty much what Leo de la Fontaine, Tain, Leo de la Fontaine does is um, he pretty much just goes around documenting it. And um, again, it's an absolutely beautiful book. And uh, and he documents like the mines and sort of try to re revamp it for tourism purposes. Uh, which sort of failed and, you know, and so there's that as well. And he sort of documented it really, it's quite eerie, but there's obviously still people there that live there. But at the back, yeah. which was the main reason I was interested in this book, is they've got like a load of archival images from back in its heyday. So the fact... Ah, now it starts to make sense. Yeah. <laughs> the old pictures um and so you know the fact that they had like a sports arena for the workers there and they used to have like yeah. sports teams play and they used to have a basketball team and they had like olympians go out there and stuff like that and um and so that all interested me but then so i sort of when i was getting this book i sort of saw the back of it and went oh my god old pictures amazing and then I sort of read the story and went, oh, actually, this is actually quite an interesting story about some forgotten land that was really quite important mm. in, you know, the 30s, 40s, etc. But, um, yeah. yeah, I really like the book. I've ne I'd never heard of Leo de la Fontaine, but um, it's quite a, it's a really nice book. And it's really like, like the size of it gets me every time. Like it's it's slightly smaller than A4, which I think is is just really nice and it's really well made and yeah I don't and the annoy I think don't quote me on this but I think that he doesn't do stuff like that anymore. He's sort of turned more to experimental, which is all good. People you know can do what they want. It's a free world. Harry exactly. Did. Um, but I really liked that and. Uh, as I said, it's you know it's the first I'd ever heard of him, and um, yeah, it's a it's a really really nice book. You can imagine it's very atmospheric work. Yeah, yeah, you got quite big landscapes. They sort of um, differ between one picture per page to like they have it. He sometimes does like a double bleed. Um, yeah, but some of the images are pretty stunning. But as you said, it's it's a complete you know it's a ghost town. But um, yeah, it was mainly the the history that sort of excited me, and the fact that it's um sort of forgotten about mm. is uh mm. yeah really interesting. So um, I'm I'm gonna out, out of five. five. Well, it's a beautiful book, beautiful series, beautiful project. Um, I'm gonna give it a five. <laughs> a oh, five out of five. Wow. God, amazing. You can see where this and, is going. Uh, <laughs> I can definitely see where this is going. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really interesting part of the world. Um, Scandinavia has always been somewhere that's just fascinated me for a very long time. So uh, I'm also, just for that reason, going to give it a uh, five oh. out of five. Well, Leo, you did good, buddy. Well, well done, Leo. Leo. Cool. We'll move on then uh, to the next book, which is... No surprise to anyone uh, for me, but, uh, or for anyone that knows me. I'm just going to move these here. Is uh... hey, the moth by Jen Sullivan. This is this is one of the ones that I guessed you'd uh, bring up. Ten points mm -hmm. to Gryffindor. Um, yeah, I mean, I've always been a huge admirer of Jem's work. Um, 
sort of his work on the painter's pool was absolutely fantastic. I spent ages photographing Stoke Woods. I never did it for a formal project, but that was always like my runaway place. And that's also where uh, Jem's sort of work was. Um, the reason that I quite like this book and the thing that I sort of immediately was quite turned on to it by was the fact that it uses quite a complicated photographic language and quite complicated sequencing in order to tell a story, but it doesn't seem overly pretentious, if that makes sense. Um, and it's not overtly complicated. So you see some books and you're like, oh my God, like just dial it back <laughs> a little bit. Uh, that it's just, you know, they use all of these different techniques and it almost seems, it almost comes across as quite amateur. Like I'm very much a firm believer in less is more sometimes. And uh, I think Jem's book does this incredibly well. Um, it's very different to a lot of the other projects that he's done. Uh, again, Jem Southern, for those that know him, is a very, very pictorial landscape photographer, whereas this work is a lot more uh, dialed back again, to sort of not to use the word too much, but it's very fragile photos. They're very intimate. They're very close. Um, the other thing that I quite like about the book as well is that it explores the notion of sort of death and dying in a way that isn't morbid. It looks at it with a certain fragility, which I think is quite lost in a lot of projects. And um, I remember looking through... And again, there's nothing wrong with the work, but I remember looking through uh, In Sickness and Health by Colin Gray and just thinking, okay, like this is this is good work, but it's just depressing. And I don't think that death necessarily has to be that. And this is a very complicated look at somebody who, you know, I'm sure he won't mind me saying it, is coming to the end of his life. At least his career, his, his photographic career, I reckon. Yeah. But it's what, 75 now? Like he's, he's Still an young. old boy. <laughs> Still young. Still, Still kicking. kicking. Um, but yeah, they've, the way that he sort of approaches that topic, approaches death in that way is, uh, I think, very commendable and yeah just the way that he's photographed it is just absolutely amazing the other thing that i quite like about it is uh how he can use language in his work um the again for those that know his project he's always been very uh um intrigued by language and uh He's always been, he's always used language in his work. So, for example, again, Painter's Pool was um, photographing uh, about a death of a, I think it was a writer. And uh, this one has got stories from the Exeter book in it and has got stories from sort of old Celtic, um, old Celtic poems and stuff like that. And uh, again, I think that there's been a running theme within the books that we've looked at so far, which is using language and photography together in order to sort of combine them and get a better, uh, get a better approach. And uh, I think that Jem's done that in a fantastic way. So uh, yeah, Jem Southern, The Moth, uh, incredible book, incredible photographer. Uh, it's got lots of dead things, dead animals in it. So Jack mm -hmm. would love it. I do love it. I um, do. I remember you, um, well, I borrowed it because I, because it, yeah, when you mentioned that it was sort of about it had sort of it was about death and uh it, but it did it in a way that wasn't so morbid i sort of well i looked through yeah. it first and went this is not about death <laughs> like just looking at the pictures i was there like there's no but then sort of looking for it again and again with the like sequencing and stuff like that it it sort of yeah he he does tell it very well. And mm. um no, I, I do I do like it. And I'm not a la I'm not a landscape it's, photographer, but well it's not really a landscape. Uh, it's very documentary. For, for, yeah. For Gem. 
I mean, there are landscape work, there in is it, landscape yeah. work in there, but uh, it's a lot more sort of documentary mm. than. No, I do like his it. I do like it a lot. Work normally is. I also like, well, I specifically like the um, the pirate pictures, not the pirate pictures, but the. Oh, man. On, on the boat. Yeah. 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 They're good, aren't they? I quite like those as yeah. well. But yeah. um, no, good book. Talented gentleman. Yeah. So I give uh, Gem Southern. Uh, the moth. Uh, five, out five out of five. five. Well, I'm gonna up my uh, up my rating. I'm going to give Gem Southern the moth a four out of five. You've uh, you've you obviously know this book quite well because uh, it's quite a well known book. But um, this book, uh, I'm just gonna make you feel awful now. This book means a lot to me. And uh, it was the first ever photo book that I ever bought because I got told to buy it. But uh, you obviously know it because you've already sh** on it. But um, it's in sickness and in hell. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> genuinely, when you said it, I was just there like, ah, oh, sh**. The thing is, do you know the reason why I used in sickness and in health and not um, like anything by Nigel Shafran or right. anything like that? Why? Was because I knew that this would be you on your it. list. Okay, okay. For people who don't know this book, this should be one of the first photo books you ever buy. I think if you, as a photographer, don't shake your head, don't do it. If you if you come into uni at first year and you want to do photo books, this is a photo book to buy. Don't you go messaging me being like, "Oh, what's the sequencing like? Look at this book and tell me that the sequencing is not beautiful." To explain, this is a uh, a book in a 29-year project for Colin Gray about his parents. And I think this is the most... This is sort of the... It's a very different to the other projects. Uh, well, the other... I don't know what to... Because it's a big project. But like the other two, or the other couple, are very different to this. You get know what I mean? So those bits mm. of the project are not as emotional as this bit, because obviously this is, as you can tell by the title, the the end of the project. Um, it sort of just it documents uh, his mother's like sort of degrading health uh, due to a stroke and a representation of his mental health at that time when he he was. It's, I think he says in the book that he was suffering with depression at the time, which you know is. You know, not surprising. But um, the photos that do it for me are the uh, pictures of his dad. I think though uh, they are just stunning. And I've even written it down that it says, it just says, it's got the bit about the mum, him, and then it just says, dad's photos, stunning. And so it, it's, um, yeah, and his dad's photos of uh, his sort of new role as like a carer and um, sort of when he does get to go out, you know, what he gets up to. But um, the, uh, yeah, as I've already said, the sequencing is just top notch. Like if you ever, well, I always look for it whenever I was struggling with like sequences throughout the three years at uni, I, I genuinely just looked at that book because it is, there's so you can tell that so much thought has gone into the sequencing. It is unbelievable. As as you said, it's a very morbid and depressing project. But in comparison to the other two in the parents, it's completely different. Like it's, you know, good, good. But um Yeah. Yeah, no, it it, it is a real you sort of feel like you're there. It's so in their family, like, I don't think anybody should be, you know, involving us in that sort of story. But yeah, it's it's just a really. Uh, but you do. You yeah, do. Yeah, and I guess uh, you involve yeah, people in in my family stories, and I guess that's sort of maybe why I I connect with the book so much is that it sort of it tells me that you know, letting people into your life and all of this stuff, even into the depressing moments is sort of all right because it makes for 
a beautiful project or well, beautiful beautifully depressing project but um no it is it is absolutely stunning and i've i've got i cannot say a bad word about it mm. but um apparently you can so <laughs> no 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 <laughs> i didn't say that it was a no. bad book i said that the book is <laughs> it's it's very less complicated. Less compl- oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. It's 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 very no. It's very book, literal, isn't it? It yeah. It's very literal in its in its, Siri, in its book. Again. What are you doing, Siri? I'm helping people wash their hands for the recommended amount of time. Just say, <laughs> "Hey Siri, set a timer for twenty seconds." What? The robots are taking over, Jack. Did I even... <laughs> okay, so my timer hasn't stopped. That's okay. We're leaving that in. That'll be a... That's uh... fine. All right. Anyway, we'll leave that in. It's, we'll leave very, that in. it's a very literal book. Yeah. Um, so, out of five? Well, I don't want to uh, change anything. So it's a five out of five for me. It's a it's five, five out, out of five. five. Yeah. I'll yeah. give it a five out of five as well. You, you, you yeah. better. Um... <laughs> The next book, Jack, that I've got is uh, one that I discussed on last week's, last month's episode <laughs> of the podcast, uh, which was, uh, of course, Astro Noir. Yes. By Katrin Koning and Sark Poltik. And the reason that I very much enjoyed this book was because it pushes the boundaries of photography in a very important way to me. Uh, It's very abstract, but it's not surrealist. Uh, Again, the photos are very delicate. The way the book is put together is absolutely fantastic. Like when you, with a lot of photo books, I look through them and I'll be going through the pages and going through the pages. And the first time I go through the book, you're like, oh, wow, this is absolutely mm. amazing. Like it's it's a joy to to see. And uh, you go through it another time and you're like, eh, okay, that's fine. And the more that you go through that book, that rewatchability, as it were, stifles and it sort of slows down. Every single time I go through Astoin Ra, I'm like, oh my God, this is just the best book that's ever been made in the history of ever. I feel like I, with all of the other ones, I was discussing like, oh yeah, you know, the I, the photos and like what they, what it, I know I'm just nerding out about this book because it's just absolutely fantastic. You know, fantastic. the weird thing is that you, you haven't um, actually said anything about the book. <laughs> You've just literally gone, I oh, I love this, I book. I love this book, I love this book. <laughs> Um, what is there to say about it? It's the reason that I haven't said anything about it is because it's again, there's not a huge amount written on the book. All I really know is that it's two photographers kind of doing quite similar to what we're doing, which is kind of a photo Mm. conversation, photographing on their iPhones day to day life and their response to day to day life and the photos. The reason that I like them is because they're nonsensical, almost. That you'll have a photograph of the moon, a photograph of a horse, a photograph or a, a portrait of, 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 of a girl, a silhouette of somebody falling. They don't have a logical, almost thematic journey mm-hmm. through the book you the reason that it's amazing is that every single page you are greeted by not a photograph but a work of art and it's i don't know another way to describe it is you you have curves with photo books and it's quite a deliberate thing that you have you have good books 
or good photos and like, you know, the peak ones. And then you kind of give the audience a rest and like, okay, yeah, we'll sort of, you know, lower down to an average photo. And then we have another mm. peak and then you have a big trough and then you have like the big, you know, the big grand finale at the end. But it's like with this book, it's just constant. Like, yeah. Every single page is up there. So I give Astray Noir six wow. out of five stars. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm giving Go on. your book a five out of five. But we were discussing off camera that we think this is the same And we're going to look like book. absolute jokers if it's not. And we're going to look like absolute jokers if it's not. Um, but the book that we've both chosen... Oh God, I'm actually scared to do this to now. be our last one. Wait, <laughs> I it, think it's it is different. different. You I did chose downward, downward, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Talk about Dan, go on. If I Should was, I say more about the yeah, book? Keep going. Talk um, about it. It's a say big more book, about the book, and it's beautifully published by another place. And um, and as I said, it's sort of this. Uh, it's Dan revisiting. Uh, keep going. I can't keep going. I need the toilet now. Um, <laughs> it's sort of Dan revisiting. Why have I not seen that before? Um, he's revisiting this road, or he's drive re-driving this road, and uh, capturing sort of what's around. And he's he, again, as I sort of said with your uh, Koning and you, sort of. There's like no real similarity. This this book, is much what I want to do, and he's done it yeah. in such a way. The photos are amazing, and the uh, yeah it's it's just exactly what i want to do and that's why i got the book and that's why it's in my top five four top four and um yeah i just love the book so damn much you get the uh the story like right off the bat um it sort of it shows you a map of or not like a drawing of the road and uh, this is in Wales, so it's all very picturesque and valleys. That Welsh. was a really bad accent, but anyway. Um, it really was. But it's sort of yeah, as I've said, it's it's sort of what I would like to do. It's about memory and nostalgia and and family, obviously, with the history of him driving it with his mum, but. Yeah, and again, it's so big that I keep looking through it, and I miss things, or I go back to things and think, "Oh, I didn't, I didn't see that before." That's actually really cool. And then I completely, yeah, it's just, it's just a brilliant book. Five out of five. Five out of five. Five out of five. Right on with five on with your five. book. You set me up, set me up to fail. On with mine. Unbelievable. <laughs> my book if you didn't guess already if I didn't guess already is uh, mm. The More by Rob Dutch and I didn't one thing that I sort of didn't realise that I mentioned when I was gushing about <laughs> coning and politics was I sort of I likened everything else to where I was with my photography and uh, I sort of I didn't ever go through with it, but in third year I was kind of toying with the notion of working a little bit more within the abstract and, you know, switching up my visual language and not going kind of full surrealism, but uh, looking at how I could focus in more on intimate details, which I think I did pull quite a lot of inspiration from that book. Um, but it never kind of came into fruition for whatever reasons. I still stuck with what I knew. Uh, but the more is definitely more towards where I am currently with my sort of own photographic styles. Uh, first of all, it is on, well, it's uh, linked to the greatest location in the entire world, which is uh, Dartmoor, um, a place where I've spent many, many hours, many many Far too long. hours um 
And the book is a designed to be a dystopian uh, sort of look at uh, the future. And it's not kind of like, you know, people wearing <laughs> tinfoil boots and laser blasters and stuff like that. It's done a lot more sensitive sensitive than uh, it, it sorry it's it's a lot more sensitive than than that but you can tell that there are sort of lonely estranged people which uh is linked very closely by the narrative of dartmoor and of that park um the dartmoor lends itself perfectly to that kind of thing um you've got very interesting sequence of but uh sequences within that and the one thing that I quite like about the book in the way that it's sequenced is that it's almost like there are small stories happening. Uh, you know, it's almost like in a sitcom, you've got the A plot and the B plot per episode. Uh, and you kind of see that. And then the whole book itself is the entire series of the show, which is quite, uh, quite a nice touch. Everything else is very linear in its fluidity. Whereas, uh, the more is very much like you follow this story, then you follow that story, then you follow this story. Um, the other thing that I very much like about the book and sort of knowing a little bit about what Rob is all about is it's a very current story that we have that he's telling and it's, uh, in his opinion, just over the horizon. Uh, obviously the more came out before everything that's happening with COVID-19 and, uh, and all the rest of that, but you know, it's almost how it seems. And it's something that as soon as we went into isolation, I actually went back to and looked through cause I immediately, I thought isolation, this kind of book, you know, uh, with, with what Rob's doing. Great guy. So I give it five out of five. five, out of five. Um, Let's do our, you know, yeah, very this, quickly. A little, uh, little bit of fun. Wild cards. Um, go. No, so you go I've ahead. Got the, keep going. Keep going. I'm, you're building uh, up the suspense, man. It's quite an old book. You know, the classic, um, I don't know when it was. this was published, but it just looks old. It was a tenor, which is a massive surprise. But this book, that I don't know why it's on my shelf, it's amongst absolute greats like Gap in the Hedge and stuff like that. It is how to photograph babies and children. <laughs> now, <laughs> don't I? <laughs> I do not know how this book has got on my shelf. Um, I don't know where oh, I don't know where yeah. it's come from. Um, it is. Oh, a weird ass book. I'll say that. <laughs> um, I've only just looked through it to be honest. Um, but it's just, it's just weird, man. Um, yeah, I think it it pictures to last a lifetime. <laughs> but um, pictures to last. I a lifetime. would give this book a a definite no no out of five. It's uh, and and if you want it, we'll, we'll leave a link. And <laughs> I don't think they publish this anymore. But um, probably not, sure, probably not. we'll leave it in the description. Um, go on then, your your book. Well, oh no, similarly. <laughs> um, my book. I have no idea where it came from. I don't remember ever buying it. Um, I, uh, it's a very old book as well, and it's got a camera on the front. Uh, and mine is the photographer's question and answer book by, uh, Michael right. Boussel. It's very technical. It doesn't offer a huge amount of real life sort of, uh, real life information on photography um and i give this personally uh a half we do have a couple more little bits and pieces to do we sign off with oh we do on my list um jack and i have made a pledge to each other and now to you, the audience. Don't be involved. That we are going to be uploading oh, right. more regularly. Yeah. 
We'll give it a go. Um, we do. I just we'll a schedule a might be nice. It might be something that improves the the quality because it's just still a technical absolute mess because my camera battery has just run out of charge and so it's it's just all gone to pop <laughs> but yeah there's definitely i think this this quarantine situation is sort of i think we need to get it together <laughs> is what i'm saying <laughs> yes so without further ado follow me on instagram at uh uh, follow photo. the show at the mediocre photo and follow me at Jack Henderson photo. Um, if you liked it, subscribe. Yes, there will be more. If you really liked it, and then like it, subscribe, and then um, subscribe. We again, Bye. we need a better sign off.